Hey guys, it's Tyler with Macrotech. Today we're going to show you how to test out a generator in. If you're not producing power for some reason or producing low power, uh, these are some simple steps to go through to see what's going on with the unit. Um, the only two things you'll need is really it's a standard voltmeter and an 8 millimeter wrench socket uh, drill. That's really the only things you'll need here to test this out. Uh, first off, you want to locate your generator in. This is what one looks like black cap right here. Everything we're going to need to test is going to be directly underneath this. What you got to do is just take these two 8 millimeters out. This cap will come off and it'll show your main circuit board. Everything in here that produces your power. You'll notice this is actually a capacitor in. This is going to be a brushless generator in. Uh, you can tell by this half moon shaped box. It only has two wires coming off of it. If you had a brush end, you would actually have six wires. Four of them would go to a, a plug-in. Another two would lead up here to your brushes. Uh, we'll show another video on how to check that one out. But since we got the capacitor here, I'll show you how to do this one. All right, first off, first and easiest thing you ever want to check is this capacitor. Uh, your capacitor has a microfarad reading on the front. This one's a 36 UF. That's the the reading you'll need to know if you're going to get tested or if you need to order one. We'll need to know that number there. Um, this is very easy to take out. You have an 8 millimeter on the top and the bottom. So you just unplug these two leads. Try not to touch these with your bare hands because they do hold a charge and if it is good uh, there could be a chance that you do get electrocuted. So if you ever do take this off just take your screwdriver or whatever, touch the leads together, that'll discharge it and you'll be good to go. You just remove these two bolts here. Capacitor should pop right out. See this capacitor? It looks good. Sometimes when they blow, the back side will be bubbled up. Front side could be cracked. There'll be black stuff coming out of it. Okay guys, a way you can test your capacitor if your voltmeter is capable without bringing it to a heating and air place. So if you see right here, this symbol right here will be your microfarad tester or your UF tester. Um, some voltmeters have it, some of the more advanced ones, some of them don't. Uh, this one happens too, so I'll just show you real quick what it should read. Uh, doesn't matter how you hook your leads up, just put your negative positive on two terminals. This one's an automatic, so it's going to start hunting for a second. And you see this one's reading 37.46 UF. So this one, this capacitor is actually supposed to be 36 UF, plus or minus 5%, so it's definitely good. Um, if you have a bad capacitor, it'll read nothing. It could read a very low microfarad reading, like 13, 20, anything really below 34. 33 is going to be a weak capacitor it can cause low voltage uh, that wouldn't be a sign of no voltage but it would definitely be an issue there so know the capacitor is good the next thing you would go to would be testing your ohms across your main your main outputs here you see you have a 120 circuit up here then you have another 120 right here combined this makes up your 240 volts. To test your ohms, you just need to test between these two 120s. With that, we're just going to take this voltmeter, put it on your ohms reading, which is that symbol right there. And we will do some testing right here. You're just going to want to test between these top two leads, R2, R1. Almost every board is set up with R's and L's, and they'll have their own two separates. Uh, this is going to be your hot. Usually your hot's going to be a, a darker wire, a black or a red, uh, sometimes a dark green. And you test it between that and your neutral, which is generally right next to it. This one here is showing a point four, right there at a point three point four. Um, that's good for this generator in. Usually if you call up to the, uh, the parts department, depending on what end you have, the ohms are different. Uh, if you call the, uh, the 
people up front there, tell them what generator you have. We can get you the chart that you need uh, with the ohms readings. And um, so you know your, all your specs on everything for your generator because they all do differ a little bit. So that top one right there reads good. Then you got this bottom set of your 120. She should read right there around the same. 0.3.4. Yep, it's fluctuating right there. 3, 4, so. So this uh this one is good. This is telling me that this generator end is good right here. Another thing that you can test is between your main leads to ground. You should be showing nothing here. You just put one on your lead, the other one on the ground anywhere on the generator. You should be showing no resistance at all um, on any of them. None of these leads to ground should show resistance. Should always be zero. Now another thing when you're testing this, you do want to make sure your panel is unplugged because your panel is grounded, so you will show a ground reading. So you can either unplug it like this, this is a quick connect disconnect, or if you don't have this style, you see you got your eight millimeters right here. Just unscrew these, and you can just disconnect your your panel wires that way, and all four of them are the same. Let's pull all those out, test the way we just did, and um, you should get an accurate reading that way. Other than that. The only other thing in your generator end would be your diodes on a capacitor end. On this unit being a diesel, most of the time your diodes are located on your rotor, but it's going to be on the back side here above your cooling fan. So this unit, if we wanted to test the diodes, we'd have to remove the whole generator end to get to it, to get to your, your cooling fan rotor. Some of the diodes on other units are located right behind this center bearing. The center bearing will be right here and your diodes will actually be clamped around the neck in the back and you'll be able to see them very easily. But we'll get you a rotor out here real quick so to show you where the diodes are located on this unit and uh, how to test them. Alright guys, this is what your rotor is going to look like. What I was explaining earlier is your diodes need to be above this cooling fan, which these ones are, right here. This is going to be your diode set. You have a left and a right diode with uh, two points on them. Uh, the start and the end for your, your coils on the left and right side. The other side I was saying, right behind the center bearing, you could have some diodes clamped to this neck. Uh, those ones are a lot easier to get to, of course, because you don't have to take the whole gen end apart to get to them. But I'll... Uh, I'll show you how to test these. These are some diodes we've had removed sitting here. Really to test them, you see on this one they're soldered in. You do want to unsolder the diodes to test them correctly so you don't get any uh, inaccurate reading from your actual coil here. But what you need, just voltmeter with the ohms reading again. An easy way to test them. Um, we do have specs on diodes readings also, what they should write, read on your ohms. Uh, some voltmeters do have a diode tester, which is that symbol right there, to, to actually test your diode with the correct symbol, but you can do it with the ohms. Uh, what your diode should do is basically ohm out one way and you reverse your leads, and it does not ohm out the other way. So, let's see what we got on these ones. You see this one's ohming out at 664. It's holding steady. So let's reverse these leads, see if it shows power the other way. And it does not. So that tells me that this diode is good. If this diode was bad, what you would do is when you reverse those two leads, you'll see your voltmeter start jumping up and you don't want that. The power, you should only show a reading one way. You reverse it, you shouldn't show anything the opposite direction. If you do, you know for sure your diode is bad. Uh, you can call up. They do have these on hand. Um, and we can get you some sent out to you if that's what your problem is. One last thing I want to show you. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but you do have your exciter coil here. 
which is the two wires that do plug into your capacitor. Um, your, uh, your chart for your Gen N testing will have the ohms reading on this also. Uh, same way as everything else. Just hook your two leads up and um, you should get a resistance reading on your voltmeter. Uh, this is 0 0.78, which is that's about right for this end, 0.5 to 0.9, so know your exciter is good. Um, these are just some of the basic steps to test the Gen N, this capacitor in. Like I said, we will do a video on an AVR. This is what your AVR looks like opposed to the capacitor. Four wires going to a plug, two that go to your, your, um, your brushes. This does have a big tower capacitor on the back side. But we'll go into that on another video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can give us a call at 1-800-845-4141. Uh, the girls up front be glad to help you. Um, I'm on the phones too sometimes. I'll be glad to help you if you have any questions. You can also email me at Macrotech. Uh, my email is tyler at macrotech.com. Uh, the descriptions will be in the end of the video here. So if you have anything to ask me or any future references, uh, just leave it in an email or give us a call.